والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Dear viewers, peace be upon you, all praise be to Allah, and may His peace and blessings be on the last and best of all messengers, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a new episode, another episode, uh, one of a series on the evolution of fiqh, our evolution in the understanding of our religion. We did talk about uh, various topics in the past, we talked about the definition of fiqh, the meanings of fiqh, the scope of fiqh, importance of learning fiqh. We talked about the source of fiqh, and we also talked about uh, the different madhahib. Uh, last episode, we were talking about the position that we should take uh, from the madhahib, and we went over the position that the student of knowledge uh, should adopt, and we were talking about the position the uh, public should adopt from the madhahib. Uh, we said that we have several points that we have to be aware of and conscious of when we uh, decide our course or our approach uh, with regards to uh, the Mazahib. One of them is that we can never ignore that heritage, uh, that great heritage of ours, the heritage of thousands of the most notable and most trustworthy scholars of Islam. One of them is that we can never condone any uh, divisive force that will break this ummah down into pieces. The other one is that the uh, source of this religion is one, which is the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and everything must be in agreement with the Qur'an and the Sunnah of uh, the Prophet ﷺ, because only Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the conveyor from uh, his Lord. There is no one but him who conveyed the message. No one but him was inspired by Allah or by the divine. Uh, may he be exalted. So now, uh, as a person who is not interested in becoming a scholar of Sharia, we said that they should not particularly subscribe to <clears throat> a particular madhab and commit themselves completely to be being Hanbalis, Shafi'is, Malikis, or Hanafis. Because the simplest reason why they shouldn't do this is that when you combine lack of knowledge with zeal and partisanship, that's a very dangerous mix. It's like putting fire next to fuel. And it is certainly... Uh, resulted in many uh, problems in the past of this ummah and has the potential to also cause harm uh, for the future of uh, this ummah. But again, if you are a, uh, a person who does not have much knowledge, can you go directly to the Qur'an and the Sunnah? Probably not. Uh, or certainly not, uh, honestly speaking. There are certainly uh, uh, statements in the Qur'an and the Sunnah that are very easy and very simple to understand and accept uh, and act upon, but in many uh, cases, the detailed rulings, and that's what fiqh is about. It's about the detailed religious rulings, uh, deducing them from the detailed scriptural evidence. They need, ha they need uh, a scholar to, to deduce them for you and to simplify uh, the approach to the Qur'an and the Sunnah for you. You will go to the scholar that you trust the most in your neighborhood and certainly you have to trust their piety as well as their knowledge. And that scholar happened to be Maliki because as we said before, the student of knowledge who is on the track of becoming a scholar of Sharia is recommended by the majority, the vast majority of the scholars to follow a particular madhab. So you'll go to the scholar and he will advise you based on his uh, school of thought, which happened to be uh, the Maliki school or the Shafi'i school. 
uh, you will end up by default being Maliki or Shafi'i, but you should not be committed to the madhab. In other words, if you live in Pakistan and you happen to be uh, Hanafi because the majority of the scholars are Hanafi, and then you emigrated to uh, Malaysia, for instance, and the majority of the scholars are Shafi'is, you should not uh, uh, have any problem or have any hesitation or reluctance uh, to ask a Shafi'i scholar in your neighborhood, in your new country, or your new uh, place of uh, residence. And uh, the same applies if you travel to the United States or Europe or so somewhere in the West where you have different masajid. <clears throat> uh, it, sh it should never be a concern for you that there is no Shafi'i masjid, for instance, in that uh, neighborhood. As long as there is a masjid, there are Muslims, practicing Muslims, who have a masjid and preferably have an Islamic school and so on, it should, you, you should not hesitate to go and live with them and be with them. Uh, otherwise, the, the madhahib will serve as a divisive force, and that is not what they meant to be, and that's not what their founders meant for them uh, to be. Okay, so now as a, uh, a person who uh, is, is not a scholar, um, like a common Muslim, uh, the public, you uh, are following the scholars of your neighborhood, you ended up being uh, Hanafi or Shafi'i. If, this, if the scholar in your neighborhood does not uh, particularly follow any madhab, then there is no harm in you following that scholar and following his opinions if he is uh, educated enough, if he's knowledgeable enough, and he's pious enough. Also, sometimes you may find books uh, that do not follow any particular madhab, uh, books that are written uh, according to the uh, evidence or the Quran and the Sunnah, and they do not particularly follow any uh, madhab. Books on fiqh, on the topic of fiqh. You should also not hesitate to read those books and benefit from them as long as they have been recommended to you by people that you consider trustworthy and uh, knowledgeable. Also, as we indicated before, you should never hesitate uh, in, in uh, adopting a new community of Muslims who do not particularly follow your madhab, in marrying your daughter to someone who does not follow your madhab, or in praying behind someone who does not follow your madhab. And you may think that this is something of the past. This is not something of the past. There are still some people who hesitate uh, uh, to pray or who are reluctant to pray behind someone who follow a, a different madhab because they may think that his wudu is not complete, his wudu is not perfect, maybe he wiped on his socks and wiping on the socks uh, is not valid uh, unless the socks have certain uh, description in their own madhab. And since he did, then maybe his, pray, his, his uh, purity or tahara is not perfected and that will compromise his prayer, there, therefore let me not pray behind them. And that concept is certainly a very divisive concept and it results in so much harm. The companions of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi never did that. The Tabi'un never did that. The founders of the Madhahib, they never did that. Uh, the greatest of the scholars of the Madhahib did not prescribe that for their followers. So that's another uh, uh, point that you have to be very aware of uh, so that you do not divide the ummah and break it into smaller pieces. So now I think that we have covered uh, that point uh, in some detail, the point of our approach to the different mazahib for the student of knowledge and for uh, the public, the Muslim public or the common uh, Muslims. 
we will move on to our next point in this series, which is the point of moderation or the issue of moderation. Moderation is, is certainly a praiseworthy word. And moderation is a term that is used extensively by people from all directions and from all wakes or walks of uh, life or philosophies, etc. Everybody claims to be moderate and everybody condones moderation and everybody asks people uh, to be moderate, particularly in matters of the religion. Moderation uh, is uh, claimed by so many people and is recommended or encouraged by uh, so many people. But let's first understand what moderation is about. First of all, is moderation wrong or right? Certainly moderation is right. We all have to be moderate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وسطا. Thus we have made you a moderate nation. Wasat here means the middle. The middle is the moderate position. It's the position that is not too far on the right side, uh, nor is it too far on the left side. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us a moderate nation. But that means what? It means that the religion that Allah revealed to the Prophet ﷺ that was practiced by the companions of the Prophet ﷺ in and by itself is a moderate religion. It does not mean that we need to moderate the religion. It is a moderate religion. So if you follow that religion, which has been practiced by the Prophet ﷺ, and his companions, may Allah be pleased with them, then you are following the path of moderation. If you strictly follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ, you are following the path of moderation. Because the Prophet ﷺ was the embodiment of the moderation. كان القرآن يمشي. The Prophet was a walking Qur'an. A walking Quran. So he was the embodiment of uh, moderation. So moderation does not mean diluting the religion or changing the religion. Moderation means following the moderate religion of Islam. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, uh, asks us to follow this religion with strength. With strength. You have to strictly follow the religion. You do not pick and choose. Allah says in the Qur'an, خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ وَاذْكُرُوا مَا فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Which means, and remember we, remember we took your covenant and we raised above you the towering height of Mount Sinai. Uh, that part that we uh, recited means, hold firmly, to what we have given you and bring ever to remembrance what is therein, perchance you may fear Allah. Now, hold firmly. Uh, you can also translate this, خُذُوا مَا أَتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةِ Take what we have given you with strength. So it's either hold firmly or take what we have given you with strength. Uh, and remember that which uh, uh, therein. Uh, so that is the, the that's the prescription of moderation here, is to hold firmly to the religion of Allah, to the moderate religion of Allah, which is in and by itself a moderate uh, religion. Allah also said, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءً عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا Which means, thus have we made you, or of you, an ummah, a nation, justly balanced. Justly balanced. That you may be witnesses over the nations, and the messenger a witness over you. That's again a reminder, as we uh, indicated before, that it is moderate and balanced by itself. It does not need to be 
balanced or moderated by us. When we come back after the break, we will continue, inshallah. <laughs> خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Including the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life We we'll listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're gonna recite life We'll listen to your recitation and will correct it according to the rules and regulations which will state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back. Uh, as we were talking before about uh, moderation, we said that Islam is a moderate religion and it does not need to be diluted, it does not need to be modified or changed, and holding firmly to the scriptural evidence, to the book of Allah, to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to the revelation uh, Allah had uh, sent down on uh, his last uh, and best and greatest of all messengers, Prophet Muhammad, our most beloved. This is the path of moderation that we should as Muslims all follow. If you want moderation, you will have to seek knowledge because moderation and knowledge are inseparable. Once you have lack of knowledge, you will tend to go to either end of the spectrum. This is naturally the result of lack of knowledge. Uh, people who lack knowledge will either go to the right side or go to the left side. Uh, certainly, this is, uh, this is certain because the, the middle is a point. The middle is a point. The light is one light. In the Qur'an, when the light is, uh, is mentioned, it is only mentioned in the singular form. When the darknesses are mentioned, they are always mentioned in the plural form. It's nur and zulumat, light and darknesses. So darkness is mentioned in a plural form, and nur is mentioned in a singular form, because the path of Allah is one path. We will, we will talk about the disagreements and we will see that these disagreements do not mean, particularly in the matters of uh, the detailed rulings, that we're following different paths or the scholars or the imams uh, followed uh, different uh, routes. Uh, and the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it does include all of this. But we're talking about the principles of uh, worship. We're talking about our relationship with Allah, our approach to the religion, our understanding of the religion. There is a dot in the middle, which is moderation, which is the book of Allah and the sunnah of His Prophet, the way they were practiced by the first generation, the most righteous uh, one, which is the generation of the Prophet and his companions, the embodiment of the theory. See, Islam did not only come as a theory. Islam lived in the practice of a nation uh, for hundreds of years. Uh, the, the, the earlier generations, the, particularly the generation of the Sahaba, were certainly better than the latter generations, yet Islam continued to live and continued to be practiced by uh, people. That is completely different from ideologies or theories that exist only in books or ideals that exist only in books and did not have to deal with the reality of mankind. So, uh, if, if you aspire to reach up to the level of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions with all diligence, strength, uh, you are a moderate uh, person. 
to reach to that level, you need to have knowledge or you need to follow people who have knowledge. Uh, like we said several times in the past, not every one of us is a scholar of the religion, and not every one of us is required to be a scholar of the religion. However, all of us are required to uh, seek the knowledge and to seek those who have the knowledge and be with them. Be with them because knowledge and moderation are always together. Someone who uh, does not have enough knowledge or who is not well grounded in knowledge, uh, if you ask them questions, they may, be e- they may be permissive by nature and they will just decide to tell you, don't worry about anything, everything is okay, there is no problem. Or they may be strict by nature and then they'll tell you, no, this is haram and this is haram and that's haram and so on. And they'll make haram for you that which is not haram. If they don't have piety to prevent them from this behavior. But certainly if they have the piety, uh, they will never do this. Because lack of knowledge per se is uh, is not that excessively dangerous until it it becomes paired up with uh, lack of piety. Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And we have not sent before you but men to whom we have conveyed our revelation or to whom we have inspired. نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So ask those of knowledge if you know not. So asking the scholars is a command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because only the scholars will help you stay on the course of uh, moderation. Uh, Al-Imam Sufyan al-Thawri and this is this is something important to know that uh, many people think that uh, the the uh, the better answer is no or the better answer is always haram or you have to do this or you don't have to do that and because of their lack of knowledge they may cause you hardship in your practice of the deen uh and you have to be aware of uh, uh, those people, and um, you have to be satisfied with only scholars uh, who have enough knowledge in the deen to guide you to the right course. Certainly, if you live in a location where you, there are no scholars, then you will ask the one who is most knowledgeable uh, and pious as well. So, uh, Sufyan al-Thawri, one of the greater imams, and we said Sufyan al-Thawri, as if you remember, from the previous episodes, was a resident of Al-Kufa. Al-Kufa is in Al-Iraq. And we said that, the, if you remember, the companions who founded the school of Al-Kufa were Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Ali ibn Abi Talib. What did Imam Sufyan al-Thawri have to say about uh, the issue of uh, knowledge and how it can protect you from hardship? He said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَنَا الرُّخْصَةُ مِنَ الثِّقَةِ فَأَمَّا التَّشْدِيدِ فَيُحْسِنُهُ كُلُّ وَحَدِ Which means verily knowledge to us is a concession from someone who is trustworthy. As for excessive strictness, that's doable by all people. Everyone can tell you this is haram uh, or this is uh, wajib. Now, Our next point, and certainly if we're talking about moderation, we should talk about excessiveness. Uh, Excessiveness is at the far end of the spectrum on the right side. There is also another problem, which is uh, laxity. Uh, That's at the far end of the spectrum on the left side. But is there excessiveness? Is there something called excessiveness? Does it exist? 
How does it exist in our time? Um, honestly speaking, excessiveness exists in our time. But the, the uh, larger problem in our time is not excessiveness. It is laxity. If moderation is the center, then I do think and, and I, I truly believe that there are a lot more people to the left from the center than there are people to the right from the center. So I think the major problem that the Muslim world is going through is laxity, uh, not excessiveness. Yet excessiveness is condemned, excessiveness is wrong, and excessiveness does exist even in our time. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ warned us from being excessive in the religion. He said in a hadith which is uh, reported from Abu Huraira, إن الدين يسر ولن يشاد الدين أحد إلا غلبة إن الدين يسر Verily this religion is easy and uh, no one will overburden himself with excessiveness with strictness except that the deen will overwhelm him no one will overburden himself. No one will resist the deen uh, in a way uh, that is not, uh, uh, the person is not trying to fly from the deen. The person is trying to practice the deen and practice the deen strictly, but he's being excessive. So if he does this, the deen will certainly overwhelm him. Religion is very easy and whoever overburdens himself in his religion will not be able to continue in that way. So you should not be extremist. You should not be uh, extremist. Uh, And the Prophet ﷺ also said, فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا سَدِّدُوا means shoot at your target. Try to hit your target. Waqaribu means, or come close to it. So in your pursuit of uh, the different uh, functions of this religion, you will try as much as you can to hit the target. But if you could not hit the target, you should try to come as close to it as you can. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَأَبْشِرُوا and have glad tidings. So after you shoot at your target, either you hit your target or you come close to your target, then you will have to be happy. You will have to be content. You will have to think good of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالْغَدْوَةِ وَالْرَوْحَةِ وَشَيْءٍ مِنْ الدُّلْجَةِ which means seek help from the times where you have more energy. At the beginning of the day, after the sun has passed its zenith, like in the early afternoon, and at the end of the night. At the beginning of the day, after the sun has uh, passed its zenith, and uh, at night. These are times when you have more energy the Prophet ﷺ is prescribing for you, if you want to perform certain uh, acts of worship, then you should seek the times where you would be able to do that and have more energy. Do not force yourself. In other words, you guide yourself gently to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if your soul is a is like a camel, uh, that ran away, uh, and you're trying to bring it back, uh, you certainly cannot do this with a camel uh, which ran away, a stubborn camel, except gently. So try to guide your soul to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with gentleness and ease. That's the meaning of this hadith uh, uh, of the Prophet ﷺ, which is uh, a warning from excessiveness and it, is, it clearly says that if you become excessive, you will not be able to carry on on the uh, path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
There is more about excessiveness that we will discuss, inshallah, in the next episode. Until I see you, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.